I don't like doing this kind of thing, but I'll tell you, every once in a while, the responsibility falls on us heathens to speak out on our own. In this case, the Norse pagan YouTuber Wisdom of Odin, also known as Jacob Spurlock, also known as Wu. And this concerns some of the things in a video released by friend and fellow polytheist YouTuber Aliyah Kai, in which she dropped a whole host of alarming observations. I'll link the video in the iCard above. Now, I've talked about Wisdom of Odin before on Twitter, his response to COVID, which has been atrocious. Uh, his enlightened centrist just want to grill mentality about COVID has put his entire community at risk. I'll link to another video from Aliyah Kai in which she breaks down Wu's approach to COVID and the problems with it. Now, I need to say something as a heathen. I want to address one major thing that Wu did in a Q&A live stream that I found frustrating. And I want to explain why I found it frustrating. Heathen research, do I support the AFA? No, I don't. If anyone's actually heard my rants on the AFA, it's really funny. Um, I, to me, that is a difficult question because ultimately I'm not near the AFA, nowhere near them. And it is a hot topic in the heathen community. Do I openly support them? Heck no. But at the same time, you know, they mostly keep to themselves and that's all I can say. Now to someone new to heathenry, this might seem like a semi-reasonable answer, but let's point out a few things. He says he doesn't openly support them, but the rest of the answer shows he doesn't openly condemn them either, which brings us to an important point. Now, I'm going to put this plainly. Denouncing the AFA is about the easiest damn thing you can do in heathenry. Declaration 127 made it so. When the AFA, founded by a guy named Stephen McNallan, made it clear to everyone around them that they were transphobic, misogynistic, and ethnocentric 14 words types, read racist, something needed to be done. A simple statement from heathens making it clear to everyone that we don't condone that shit was shown to be necessary. Note, necessary, because the trend of ignoring it wasn't doing it. This seemingly casual answer, that he doesn't openly support them, given his platform, undoes that work, which was arguably minimal to begin with. The declaration was a first step to dealing with this issue in heathenry, which is an ongoing project within this faith. Giving this kind of answer, to thousands by the way, undoes years of combating this ebb and flow of racist bullshit, which constantly rears its ugly head within our religion. It attempts to excuse the AFA of their racist views in the name of unity, such as metagenetics, the idea that our gods are in the DNA of white people. And I want to emphasize this. Excusing racism for the sake of unity was a strategy that was already tried in heathenry. It only resulted in the spread of racism within our communities, which cannot and should not be tolerated. It's important to point out, Jacob's audience is mostly new pagans, recent converts that, as we do, have grown out of the ground and gone searching for content and guidance. Now, if I was a new pagan, this is something I'd want to know, need to know even. So why is he not explaining it? I mean, is he ignorant? And this isn't the first time that he's made this kind of statement. His major criticism of the AFA was essentially that they had too many rules, that they are too formal in their ritual framework. And he framed them as the organization of Asatru in America, with no warning to the matter. No discussion to the racism issue that is so blatant within that specific organization that he cited as an offhand example. He could have mentioned that one of those rules is no interracial marriage, but whatever. Like, <laughs> here's the clip. But Asatru is an Icelandic term. So it is a very modern term that comes from Iceland um, that speaks to faith in the Aesir gods and the Asir gods. I will also say that this term gets thrown around more with formalized groups such as the Asatru Folk Assembly um, and the Asatru community here in North America and of course in Iceland with the, uh, the Asatru community there. Um, and I feel like you see this term more in formal settings than you will see Norse pagan or heathen. The other failures of Asatru is the fact that it is very formalized. Um, I find that, you know, if you're following Asatru specifically, you tend to have a more set of rules. Even, you know, if you go to Iceland, there are rule sets you have to follow. There are things that are expected of you when you um, practice Asatru in Iceland. And there's things expected of you when you're in the Asatru Folk Assembly here. There's things expected in the Asatru community here as well. Um, so I, to me, it's always been a little too formal of a term. Um, now, I, I find myself using Asatru, again, when 
I want people to find my videos more. Right. I want to read this other principle real quick before we move away from this, mm -hmm. before the conversation evolves. Um, this is uh, number four, the family principle. Healthy families are the cornerstone of the folk society. Its strength, prosperity is derived from them. Sounds good, right? That's a good first sentence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we in Ostertru support strong, healthy, white family relationships. We want our children to grow up to be mothers and fathers to white children of their own. We believe that those activities and behaviors supportive of the white family should be encouraged while those activities and behaviors destructive of the white family are to be discouraged. They're probably against interracial marriage. Yep. I think they're against adoption by this as well. Oh, white geez, children you're right. of their own. Can't oh, even wow. adopt anybody. Now I hear that Wu is largely new to this religion and you know, faux pas will happen. And I thought that maybe he doesn't know about Declaration 127, or it's possible that he just doesn't understand the history of this community. But maybe he does. So either he's so woefully ignorant that he doesn't understand one of the most relevant events in the history of the modern heathen community, or he's actively trying to erase it. Either way, it ain't good. Now, why is this happening? It seems to all come back to money. In heathenry, as a content creator of any type, you run into a point where you realize the substantial number of outspoken racists that there are in this religion. You can either placate them or fight them. And as we've seen, there isn't another option. And the stance of holding a non-political position on the matter is to placate. It increases your market share because where you stand on the matter is ambiguous. So people might assume that you align with them, but for the non-political person, that ambiguity is a political act, placating the racists within our religion. But I was sent something that was a little more damning. Now, Wu's name is Jacob Spurlock, which he has mentioned and published on various mediums associated with his YouTube and Instagram uh, presence. And somebody found his old Twitter that's collecting dust on the internet. Now, on there, he has some interesting takes, including an enlightened centrist perspective on President Trump in which he supports him, condemns him, and compares Putin to Peter the Great, which is impressive for a single tweet, but you know. Whatever the case, uh, the account follows Stephen McNallan, which is interesting, nothing on its own. People hate follow the guy, but then there's this. That's 2019. It seems to be legit asking for advice on holding ritual. And it's interesting that he chose Stephen McNallan of all people. There are many personalities within heathenry, and he chose McNallan. And this is right before Jacob started his YouTube channel. But McNallan had already started his. And this is what his YouTube presence was like at the time of this post. Tonight, I want to talk to you about race. Now, this is not meant to be a race discussion. This is meant to be a race discussion. But defeat brought with it only a more savage repression of the Wotan archetype. Germans were now to be peaceful factory workers busily creating an economic miracle, making money. The denazification program was ruthless and relentless. The Allies did everything in their power to bury Wotan's furious ecstasy under gross materialism. I told you about the Wotan network an organic, grassroots, long-term campaign to awaken the European descended peoples. Our aim is to shake our folk from their slumber, to put iron in our collective backbones so we will stand up tall and proud and speak and act in our own defense. Ancestry is better than universalism. The Wotan archetype manifested in the revival of nationalism, Germanic mysticism, the occult lore of the runes, and folkish culture. Figures of Jesus on horseback were eerily similar to the repressed image of Wotan. I will defend my race. We white people face numerous threats to our future. Our numbers are shrinking in almost every location on Earth. Europe. Our homeland, the place that gave us birth, will be majority non-white within a couple of decades unless, as I intend, we can change that situation. I believe we will see two things happen. First, there will be a violent reaction against the Islamification of Germany. Wotan will arise to defend his people. 
Although the average German may not want to admit it, the truth is clear. Even if not one more immigrant is allowed in Germany, there are already enough of them to change the face of Germany in the coming years and forever. If the politicians do not remove them, Wotan, whether you think of him as an archetype or as a god, will intervene to restore balance. Wotan now sleeps, but he will waken and he will be ready for war. Now, I don't know what's in Jacob's mind. I know that he associates with people who talk up the AFA. Uh, he apparently reached out to Stephen McNallan, the founder of the AFA and the barometer for folkism and heathenry. And I know that people speaking out against him are receiving threats in Jacob's name. Now, in light of this, someone reached out to Jacob and just asked him a few straightforward questions about the AFA and his opinions on various subjects, including Declaration 127 and gender identity. Now, his stance on these two things are interesting given the history of heathenry and Jacob's reaching out to Stephen McNallan and his previous answers on the AFA. Here he calls Declaration 127 a method of control. Control? Let's read the key portion of the Declaration. The AFA's views do not represent our communities. We hereby declare that we do not condone hatred or discrimination carried out in the name of our religion and will no longer associate with those who do. We will not grant the tacit approval of silence in the name of Frith to those who would use our traditions to justify prejudice on the basis of race nationality, orientation, or gender identity. There's no control here. There's no bending the knee, as he states. This would suggest fealty to an individual, and there's none of that here. Only a simple statement of standing against bigotry within our community, and a minimal one at that. And if you can't make that minimal statement, it shows who you are. Now, here he's asked about trans rights. He dodges the question for some reason by trying to make the case that it's unrelated to heathenry, which is a non-answer and a failure to engage. Anyone who has looked around the heathen community knows that there are many transgender heathens and there are many heathens who are transphobic, especially the AFA. Here's two relevant screenshots on the matter regarding specifically the AFA. And as you can clearly see, the AFA does not think that trans people exist. By denouncing that gender is a social construct, they are by the principle of entailment, stating that transgender identities cannot be valid. They're wrong, by the way. This alone shows that gender identity is a deeply relevant issue to heathenry. And it is part of why gender identity is mentioned in Declaration 127, and why for the past several years, Declaration 127 has been a standard among heathen groups, that if a heathen organization supports Declaration 127, they might be okay. But if they don't, you know where they stand. To accept anything short of that is to repeat our past mistakes in heathenry. The thing is, this isn't the first time heathenry has seen this kind of behavior. Here's Ryan Dennison discussing the rhetorical strategies of Stephen McNallan in the 90s. Yeah, I, just, I remember that kind of being a thing, too. It's like, oh, wait, no, Stephen McNallan's not hiding it anymore. Right. Right. right? Like He's saying the quiet part really fucking loud. Right. Right, right. And all of the people that are writing about um, heathenry in America up until the, that point basically portrayed McNallan as this uh, okay guy who's doing yep. this kind of middle of the road type thing. He's trying yep. to bring all of heathenry together and that, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Uh, if you look at um, uh, Kaplan's uh, book, um, oh shoot, what was the name of it? Um, Radical Religion in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he talks about McNallan in there is kind of this, he talks about Murray, uh, and um, Christensen is being, of course, the far right. And he talks, uh, this This is published in 97, by the way, uh, 96 or 97. Mm -hmm. And uh, he talks about the troth being inclusive. So he's giving right and left. And he, then he tries to portray kind of McNallan as kind of this middle of the road figure. Right. Uh, which we all know he's not. Um, but at the time he was very carefully walking that line with his public statements about whether or not, you know, he was white supremacist or not. 
Here, Jacob goes into more detail about his stance on the AFA, saying that though he doesn't support the AFA, he will not slander them. But he wasn't asked to slander them. He was asked if he condemns the AFA on the basis of their own words, which is why Declaration 127 exists. But further, he says that the AFA is the scapegoat of gatekeepers who truly wish to divide our community. Divide our community? From what? From the AFA? From this? Well, Wisdom of Odin, I'll do you a favor. I advocate that no one consider you divided from the AFA. Since you are so adamant that you are not divided from them, then your wish is granted. And it should be assumed that you stand for unity with them, or at the very least, that you do not want to stand in opposition to the views expressed by the AFA. And just as the Declaration says, you are free to stand for whatever principles you see fit, but you are free to stand alone. <laughs>